Hi, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, Sweet Potato Fly. And you're saying, you're saying, John, what the hell is Sweet Potato Fly? What are we making now? It's actually really good. It's a fermented beverage from Guyana, which is on the northern coast of South America. And it's made out of sweet potatoes, as is called that in its name. But basically what we're gonna do is grate a couple of sweet potatoes, add some spices and some sugar and a little bit of lemon juice, let this ferment, and then as it gets a good rigorous fermentation going, once you really see the stuff start to bubble, we're gonna bottle it, refrigerate it, and it's honestly, it sounds disgusting, but it's delicious. I've actually given it to people that don't like fermented food and have really gotten a great reaction out of it. So, as usual, it's simple to do. It takes a little bit of uh, getting it you know, lined up and, and getting it in the crock, and then we'll, uh, we'll move forward. So here, let's, uh, let's get to work on these potatoes. Make ourselves some room. You don't need to make it in a giant ancient old crock. Um, you can, I, you know, it's convenient. This is actually a, a, about a two and a half gallon crock. A lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I heard that you shouldn't use, uh, you know, ancient crocks like this, that they used to use uh, lead-based glaze to get this beautiful coating on them. And your crock could very well be poisonous. I actually tested these. You can buy on Amazon, of all places, a lead test kit, maybe 3M. And what it is, is these little ampules of uh, liquid, and you basically, you squeeze it, and you test the syrup, rub it on the inside of your crock, and if there's any lead in it, the little indicator will turn red. And I tried it, I rubbed my crock and nothing happened. I rubbed a little piece of lead pipe and it turned bright red. So they really do work. Um, and I think they're really a good investment. It's about 20 bucks for uh, a dozen of the little test sticks. So if you've got some old crocks that you wanna use, uh, test them first. So I've tested my crocks. My crocks are clean and ready to go. So I can use my crocks with uh, without worrying about lead poisoning. Another thing I'd recommend is a Kevlar glove. We're gonna be using the, the grater here and you know, I don't really like to get a lot of skin in with what I'm grating. So by putting on this glove, I can not worry about what I'm doing to my body as I'm grating potatoes. I get a little vigorous when I'm grating and uh, sometimes it's best that I have an extra layer of protection. So essentially what we're gonna do is just grate two. I'm gonna make two, I'm gonna make a gallon of this. So I'm gonna use two potatoes. These are pretty big potatoes. I don't know, maybe about two, two pounds of potatoes. And the other ingredients are a cup of sugar, the juice of one lemon, and then some spices. Um, in Sander Katz's book, Art of Fermentation, he refers to these as the Christmas spices. So cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Sounds kind of funny for a, a delicious beverage for the middle of July, but it's honestly, it's really good. We're not gonna use a lot, just a, just a hint. And I think it's gonna put a nice touch on this, on this beverage. So uh, excuse me while I get to my potatoes. So the thing about eating healthy, you get a lot of exercise. Next thing I wanna do is actually rinse these potatoes. I'm gonna rinse in the sink and try to get a lot of the starch off. The potatoes are really starchy and when you ferment it, the starches have a tendency to kind of transmogrify into the sort of slimy stuff. And I find that the potatoes actually, the finished product, the beverage, actually tastes better if you just rinse some of that off the potatoes. So let's, let's hit these in the sink real quick. So this isn't a real big step here. I'm just trying to give them a real quick soak just to get the, the bulk of the starches off them. And then we're gonna just strain them. You can do it twice if you want, or not at all, it's an optional step. Let's get some water in our crock. Like I said, we're gonna make a gallon. We can get our sugar in there now. Here's a gallon of water. Gallon of water, a cup of sugar. I've seen recipes use, actually use up to two cups of sugar in this. If you like it a little sweeter, go ahead and, and do the two cup variety. I don't really tend to do a lot of sweet beverages, so I'll just do one cup in mine. Like I said, there's a couple of spices in here. Not a lot, but just a little bit of flavor. A little bit of nutmeg. Fresh is always better. 
a little sprinkle of cinnamon, half a teaspoon, and definitely not a lot of cloves, a, a, a quarter to an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, a lemon's worth of juice. You can use a, a fresh lemon, that'd be awesome. And even, you know, hit it with the, uh, all the zest right off of the lemon into the crock would be great. Let's get all our spices incorporated and our sugar dissolved. And then in go the potatoes. And that's it for, for now. Let's let this ferment. I'm gonna stir this probably twice a day. Uh, a lot of times when we ferment things, you know, we put the, the pickle pebbles on the top or a, a Ziploc bag full of water and press it down. I can't do this. I mean, I've literally got a, a crock, a gallon full of, of liquid and potatoes. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stir it twice a day. That way no mold can form on it because we're stirring in the little bit of mold that might land on this. The mold is everywhere. We, we, we're gonna deal with it. And we're gonna do that by just stirring it every day. Twice a day, once, you know, when you get up in the morning before you go to bed at night or when you think about it and you wanna see if your sweet potato fly is doing anything yet, just give it a quick stir. And it helps it to ferment. We're using the yeast on the skin of the potatoes to ferment this beverage, the wild yeast. So, and yeast definitely is an aerobic fermentation. So, you know, stir it a couple times a day. That'd be great. But, you know, don't, don't forget about it and keep it covered, keep the dust out of it, keep the animals out of it. And we'll check back in on this in a couple of days and hopefully it'll be really bubbling. And then, like I said, every day, just come over and, you know, keep it on the counter where you see it and you remember and give this thing a stir. And you can see, I guess it's been two days. This is already nice and bubbly. So, you know, I'm gonna stir this, stir up some of the yeast from the bottom. Make sure you've got all your sugar dissolved. Make sure you've got your spices incorporated. And, you know, just keep doing that once a day, twice a day. Still pretty sweet. I'm gonna let it go for another day and then I'll get this into some bottles. So after your sweet potato fly has been fermenting for eh, about a week, 10 days, you wanna let it go a while. I mean, if, especially if you use the, you know, the full two cups of sugar. I only put a cup of sugar in mine, so it, it, it's been a week, and I think, you know, I tasted it. It's not real sweet. I've got a nice amount of bubble in it. I've got some good butzel going on in there. So I think I'm ready to bottle this. What I wanna do is just, you know, filter it out, all of the uh, grated potatoes and just get the, the liquid. You can reuse this potato if you wanna maybe grate this up or chop it up and stir it into pancakes or something like that. If you are lost interested in the potatoes and you just wanna compost them, that's fine too. But really what we're after is just the, the liquid that we're gonna, is our sweet potato fly. We're gonna get this strained out and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in some some bottles and let it continue to ferment and then we'll have a delicious carbonated beverage. Now to bottle this I love these. Easy cap bottles, these are awesome. They are um, a pint bottles with a, a bale top uh, sealing system here on the top, and they're awesome. You, you, you put the, the cap down, there's a little rubber seal in there, and you can clamp it shut. They're a nice thick glass. So, you know, if you're fermenting something, buy bottles that are meant to ferment in. Don't buy the little cheap, you know, vinaigrette bottles at the, the decorator store. They're especially square bottles, they will break. You know, we're gonna make some serious carbonation on these, so buy bottles that are, are suited for fermentation. These Easy Cap bottles are awesome. Click a link below, grab a case of these. They're a little expensive. I think they're maybe $30, $35 now. They're more expensive than they used to be, but they're really worth it. They're, you know, if you're gonna be making fermented beverages, invest in some good bottles. You don't want cheap bottles that are gonna explode while you're trying to enjoy your, uh, your, your deliciousness here. But go ahead and just get your, uh, your, your fermenting beverage here into these bottles and uh, you can use, this is a, a bottling funnel. 
and just leave a little bit, leave you know, leave some headroom because this is gonna ferment, and you're gonna want some place for that carbon dioxide to go. So if you leave, you know, zero room, you're gonna have a problem. But you know, I like to leave, you know, just right about the shoulder area here, and then go ahead and just cramp the bottle down, and then I'll put these away for just a couple of days until they're fermented. One thing I like to do is fill. You know, I'm filling, I'm, I'm fermenting what I'm gonna drink in these uh, glass bottles, but find a plastic bottle that you can fill along with your bottles of fly that you, you know, are gonna be drinking. And this is kind of the test bottle. If you fill this up, um, just about as full as the rest of them, leave, you know, a little bit of headroom there. Leave that in there. Put the cap on tight, and this is the test bottle. See, so you can kind of squeeze it. See how right now it's it's you know I just filled it, so it's not it doesn't have any pressure in it. But in a week, I won't be able to squeeze this thing. It'll be hard. It'll be hard as a right. It'll be like squeezing this thing, and I know it's fermented. And that's my little test that I can no longer squeeze this bottle. Then I know all of my bottles are ready to go in the fridge. So once this thing is hard as a rock put everything in the fridge and allow this to refrigerate. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling up these bottles and then um, I'll put them aside and let them continue to ferment, like I said, until my little test here is hard. And then um, I'll come back to you and we'll uh, finish up this video. And here, again. You make sure you leave some headroom. You want to leave like an inch or two of, of space because you don't want these things to become bombs. So, you know, get them about halfway up the neck, clamp shut, and we'll just put these, again, you know where I ferment my laundry room. And um, I'll let these ferment for a couple of days and I'll come back with you guys and we'll take a look at our fermented carbonated sweet potato fly. All right, we're just about done. I think I think we've we've uh, achieved our goal. We've got a delicious beverage here. We did our first ferment with the potatoes and the sugar water in the crock. Let that go for a couple of days. Get active. Get nice and bubbly. Ferment a lot of the sugars out, and then strain out the potatoes and put it in sealable bottles. And remember, we made this our little test bottle here. We've got our little guy that remember I pushed on it, and this one I can't even I can like barely dent it. I mean, this thing is like solid as a rock. It'll probably explode in my hands. The, the cap is bulging. I can't dent this bottle. My next trick is take all of these and get them out of the warm where they're fermenting and right into the refrigerator. But I, I, I mean, I just have to um, warn you, don't open these warm. These are highly carbonated. And um, well, here, let's go open one. And you can see it's super carbonated. I made a huge mistake. What did I do wrong? You can um, drink, oh, I don't know, maybe an ounce of this. When you do this, um, think about what you, you, you've created, the, the, this basically a, a, a warm beer. You know, you wouldn't open a, a warm beer. You get your beer home from the supermarket and pop one open. No, put it in the fridge, chill them, and then once they're cold, actually what happens in the science is carbon dioxide is more soluble in a liquid at colder temperatures. So what we want to do is refrigerate our, our sweet potato fly and then open it and then enjoy it. Okay, here, let's start over. Let's grab one out of the refrigerator and a clean glass, pop one open. There, nice pop, stays in the bottle. All of that carbon dioxide is dissolved in the fly. Got a nice little bubble up here. Look at that. This is a fermented beverage. This is what you're trying to do. Don't open your fermented beverages warm. And pour this off and get a nice head on it. And look at that. That is a beautiful sweet potato fly. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next week. This is good stuff. That's a wrap. Yay.